Boys, we're witnessing something special here. Think about the history that we embrace about this wonderful event. No one is even in the same zip code as Porsche as far as overall wins. They have 16. Ferrari's last overall win came in 1965. Today, Audi will draw level with Ferrari with nine overall wins. That is significant in the history of this event. It's the 78th running of Le Mans. And Audi draws level with Ferrari. That's something that will be not lost in Ingolstadt. And I don't think Audi even saw this coming, you know. I mean, they just didn't have the speed of the Peugeots. And you might expect one of the four of them to break, but not all four. And any one of those four Peugeots had the legs, they had the speed to win this race. No question about that. Englishman Danny Watts and Nick Leventis and Ulsterman, Johnny Kane, who has called England home for so long. What a display this has been from the lead P2 car, Cal. They have never been headed in this race. And we wondered about the pace they were running there. Started run lap times right around their qualifying pace, but the car is held together. The boys haven't put a foot wrong despite their incredible run here this afternoon and uh, throughout the course of the last 24 hours. And uh, really a credit to HPD, the performance of not only the engine, but that chassis. It's the ex-Adrian Fernandez car that won the LMP2 title in the ALMS series last year. It's performed wonders here today with that new aero body kit on it as well. It's amazing, too, because High Crop Racing from the United States, Duncan Dayton's team, had a different philosophy. They stuck to their game plan and ran a conservative pace. And there's the, there is the engine that broke. So you just don't know. For these boys in the nine, I think we've mentioned several times, they have all <laughs> enjoyed victory in the GT2 class. He's not giving up. Here at Lamar. He's driver in training right there. <laughs> yeah. He still loves Peugeot. Uh -huh. You see the flag. I say engine broke on, on the high crop car. It's not really true. The engine's still running. It's just had an overheating problem. That could be a bunch of different things that probably will never happen again, I'm sure. For Timo Bernard, I guarantee you, he's hearing every... Pebble. <laughs> <laughs> every pebble, every vibration, every sound, every everything as he makes it to the checkered flag. Being being up front, if you're racing head-to-head -to -head with somebody, you don't think about it, but when you're by yourself or by your teammates like, like we're seeing right now, you're just praying, come on, baby, let's get to the checkered. Those last couple of hours whilst he's been in the car must have seemed like two years in his life. Romain Dumas, tense, tense moments. Hang in there, mate. You've got less than three minutes to go. <laughs> we just saw it there, too. What about that 10-year-old GT1 Celine, boys? Yeah, it's going to win GT1. That is Gabriel Gardel behind the wheel for Labra competition. The Corvette for Luke Alphon is second. What a shame for those Matek competition four GTs because, boy, they were strong, particularly the 60. But it went out many, many hours ago. Yeah, not by a problem of its own, too, getting run into from, from behind. But this is what it's all about. They're on their way home. God, what beautiful shots. And what beautiful weather we've seen for this whole race. This should be their last yeah. lap, I would believe. Just over two minutes on the clock. Smashes the distance record run. Loic Duval was just being congratulated there by Hugh Deschonac. Consoled and congratulated at the same time. Well, we are level with the overall largest amount of laps run. However, as far as pure mileage, this is a Le Mans record as far as distance travelled in the history of this. Event. And isn't that something to put to bed for Timo Bernard, Mike Rockefeller, and Romain Dumas? They're part of something very, very special. We'll see new cars from Audi and from. Hey, I've seen <laughs> Nigel Mansell do that, and uh, <laughs> the car can't go. Oh. Well, everybody looks to Formula One as the premier category in world motorsports for the leading edge of technology. Don't turn your nose up at this either. This is world-leading stuff in diesel technology and in sports car and endurance technology to push your car to the limit sprint style for 24 hours and be the survivor. Not only be the, the winning survivor, but how about one, two, three? And I believe that coming to Lamont for a manufacturer... This is where you learn how to develop technologies for streetcars, more so than Formula, a lot more so than Formula One. A lot of the technologies that Audi's learned here, reliability. In the same year. And that's an incredible achievement, winning Daytona and winning Le Mans, but doing it in the same year. Wow. They're all poised. And Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich can breathe 
the most massive sigh of relief. The pressure that was put on that man's shoulders politically, internally at Audi to deliver was immense. And that was a word that the eight-time winner Tom Christensen used, and it's an appropriate adjective. The boys from the eight, Trellier and uh, Andre Lotter and Marcel Fessler, they will get to stand on the podium as well. And so too Dindo, Tom and Alan. But the glory and the victory belongs to car number nine. The traditional flag waving from the corner marshals who have been there every moment of this race and all week long <laughs> from Wednesday onwards. A year ago, it was the lion that roared. Audi has owned this place for the last decade. This now marks nine wins in 11 years. Audi were pushed back down the stairs last year by Peugeot, but they are back. Audi back to where they belong at Le Mans. One, two, and three. A whitewash at Lassar. And what about this for three super guys, super talented drivers, Rockefeller, Dumas, and Timo Bernard. It's been incredible. And this is where it gets wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. They've even designed those cars so they can make the turn yeah. and yeah. head in. Yeah. Usually you can't do that without pushing back. If I designed it, you'd be done a three-point turn. <laughs> There's Alan McNish congratulating Wolfgang Ulrich. They've been through a lot together. And as the old, elder statesman in the team, they'll be proud of their young charges, their young teammates. Chris is amongst it all. Chris. Dr. Ulrich giving high fives to all of his engineers on pit lane. Dr. Ulrich. Oh, he's moving over to the number eight engineers right now. You've engineered this team back to... Oh, guys, I think he's got to just try and work his way around. He's, he's, he's focused on his crew right now. He's pushing all the television away. This is when the team, the drivers, everybody shares this victory together. It's so much effort and energy and preparation before you get here. And then completing it like this, wow. Look at the emotion. And for Ralph Jutner, the man in the glasses there, the technical director for Audi Sport, he shares a huge part and has huge equity in this victory. And that's why he was pushing the TV cameras away because he's crying too. I'll Dor guarantee Dorsey, you. Are you crying down there? No, I'm good. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I guarantee if you talk to Ralph Jutner about when do you prepare for next year, he'll say tomorrow morning. It never stops. Maybe after midday tomorrow. After <laughs> they'll midday. probably have a hangover. <laughs> they know how to celebrate, that's for sure. We've been there with them. And there's the man in charge of it all. You know, we talked about the eight car being the young guns at Audi, but this is really the future as Timo steps out. When you look at the ages, Rockenfeller at 25, Timo at 29, and Roma at 32, they're actually younger on average than the newcomers in the eight car. You are looking at the future of Audi. And Chris is there. Chris, can you get Ulrich? Dr. Ulrich, you engineered the team back to victory lane. Have you finally taken a sigh of relief? Yeah, it's great here, and everybody should celebrate. Uh, a perfect team job, that's what I can say. Thank I remember you. the emotion last year on your face when Peugeot won, but a loss like that, does that make a victory like this feel so much sweeter? Yeah, man, a victory is always sweet. Yeah, yeah, bad thing is that there is always a loser. Congratulations. And Dr. Ulrich showing some compassion for Peugeot. He did not want to see them go out in that fashion. As far as LMP2, the Stracker boys have done it. We knew that that was going to happen. That was a comprehensive victory. In GT1, the Labra competition, Celine has done it. And in GT2, well done to Mark Lieb, Richard Leitz, and Wolf Hensler, victorious in GT2. There we saw the two HPD cars. Stracker get the victory in P2. Highcroft come across the line and finish their first event at Lamar. That's a big moment for that team led by Duncan Dayton and Robin Hill.